Well, we have all seen speed cameras on our streets in the city, and maybe you've gotten a ticket. They are located within a quarter mile of school zones. They cost you $50 and no points on your license, though. But critics say they're simply a money grab. So we wanted to know, do speed cameras really make our roads safer? Dick Brennan hit the streets to find out as part of our new series, Question Everything. In the city of the fast and furious, there's a high-tech eye in the sky that can write you up without pulling you over. Speed trap reported ahead. Speed cameras, the long arm of the law coming with a long lens. They've been around for a decade, but now more than 2,000 speed cameras exist in the city, around 750 school zones. And if you see the light, it's already too late. Uh, I think it's uh, ridiculous, honestly. Why? Taking people's money. Many drivers told us they feel speed cameras are the new big brother, a kind of high-tech pickpocket. They're going to make money off of the people doing nothing. Oh, now it's just a big, basic gotcha and a money grab. And that's what this is unfortunately about. It's really not about safety. Not just about safety. Most everyone usually thinks slower is better, except maybe Jay Bieber of the National Motorists Association. If you lower the speed limit and people are safer, how can you be against that? Well. The first thing I would say is simply lowering the speed limit doesn't actually make people safer. Okay, we definitely need an explanation for that, how slower is not safer. But the city says it has the numbers on its side. It says since the cameras were launched 24-7, that violations have actually gone down 30%. And they say at some locations, as much as 96%. They reduce the rates of speeding anywhere on our streets, especially around sensitive areas like schools. And State Senator Andrew Gennardis says usually violators are one and done. Most people, about 70% of people who get one speeding ticket, don't get another because they learn their lesson. Do you like any of what you see oh, here? Oh, yes. You see this what we call zebra striping. Mary Beth Kelly understands how dangerous roads can ruin lives. It destroys families. It destroys communities. My husband was a physician on the Upper West Side. And her husband, Carl Henry, was killed by an NYPD tow truck making a turn while he was biking with her in 2006. He survived for three days on um, in intensive care on life support. Um, and then died from his injuries. I used to feel like it was as though a bomb went off and all of us had shrapnel in us. You know, and you carry that for the rest of your life. And she's dedicated her life to saving others, helping found families for safe streets. And she's got the, the right away. Safer streets. Nobody questions that. But are speed cameras the best way to get there? Jay Bieber says no. It's really not about safety. And he took us for a spin in the Bronx to try to prove his point. So this is a school zone, 25 miles per hour with a camera. What do you make of this roadway? This is not a roadway that is designed for people to feel comfortable driving at 25 miles an hour. This is a roadway which is designed for people to feel comfortable driving at 35 or 45 miles an hour. It's two lanes. There's no traffic coming in the other direction. What's worse, he says, since the city issues violations when you go more than 10 miles over the speed limit, you can get a ticket like this one from this very block for going 36 in a 25. And he believes the $50 tickets target those who can least afford to pay. You don't need speed cameras. You don't need a lot of ticketing. What you, what you do is you design a roadway for 25 miles an hour, and people will generally drive the speed that you've designed the road for. On that point, many actually agree. If you design streets more narrowly, lanes more narrowly, you actually slow traffic down. But Senator Gennardis says it's still about enforcement. He even proposed a bill that people who get six or more speeding tickets a year have a speed limiter device installed in their car. It actually forces you to do the speed limit. If you are going to continue to drive your car unsafely, we're going to force you to drive your car safely. He even got a demonstration and says it works well. My foot is all the way on the gas right now. If you don't want to pay the $50, I have the easiest solution in the world. It's a loophole that we put into this law. It's very simple. Don't speed. If you don't speed, then you won't get a speeding ticket. It's a loophole. As we mentioned, critics believe that the tickets unfairly target those who can least afford them and certainly don't have the resources to fight them like others might. They say you should go after the speeders on the highways who they claim cause the biggest dangers, the people doing 70 or 80 miles per hour on the LIA. This is the rare case where it feels like you're right, you're right, everybody's right in some way because we all feel it at all those different angles and it's all true. Yeah, both sides could be right. And what's interesting is that, you know, the politicians don't want to make any more laws bringing in more tickets. It's just not very popular, as you can see. But let's look at the future here. They're going to be driverless cars. Driverless cars, they will be speed limited. You saw that machine that actually puts a limit on your car. Mm -hmm. They will be speed limit. 
bottom line in the future is it's going to be a lot harder to speed. Okay, which is what we're trying to get to, I guess. We right? would certainly hope so, right. yeah. Narrow roads. But we don't we just want to take money from people either. No, so we don't. Two sides to every story. We know that, too. And we're going to keep investigating. This is a new series called Question Everything, and that's what we're going to do, folks. Fantastic. Great topic, Dick. Well done. Thank you. All right.